Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, live Facebook photography, 9.30 a.m. You can figure out the rest. So uh, three things today that we're going to hit on. Uh, first is just a question completely off topic from anything photo related at all. This is, I mean, if we thought that the Epiphan was like off topic, this is way off topic, but you might be interested. So let me know if you are. Um, I got a new Wi-Fi router thing at home called the Luma. It's one of these new mesh routers. Been having some interesting experiences with it. If you guys care at all about that sort of thing, let me know. I would be happy to talk about it, but I also don't want to tune people out who are only here for the photo stuff. So just let me know in the comments if you want to see that or not. Oh, and I suppose I should bring up my live feed here, assuming there, there it is, there it is, and I am live. Okay, so next, uh, let's talk about this Epiphan very briefly because at the moment, oops, that was definitely the wrong button. At the moment, um, it's not working for me. So here's what's going on with the Epiphan. First of all, it's really, really easy to set up. Okay, let me let me tell you the good so far, what I've found so far. Uh, plug this thing in. It has a very simple quick start guide. It's kind of like the old Apple quick start guides. There is no step three. Okay, there's eight steps on here, but still, it's one of those really, really simple and straightforward. And so basically what you got to do is you, um, so I don't know why I'm, I'm looking at my live feed here, trying to get my comments up and that's not working for some reason. Anyway, um, you basically plug in your HDMI, step one, plug in the HDMI, and that could be a camera, right? Because I mean, this, obviously what I have in here is not normal. So you plug in your camera straight into it, great. Plug in an ethernet cable, step two. Step three is turn it on. It comes up with a code on the front, a, what is it, seven, uh, eight digit letter code. That you then have to go to facebook.com slash device. You type in that code and automatically they connect. It's pretty slick actually. Then there's the step that could use a little more clarification. I've already talked to Epifan. They have already updated, updated their online documentation, but clearly this is what people are going to be looking at because this is what comes in the box. So if any of you are watching this who is have bought one or is buying one of these things, here's one of the really important things you have to know. You plug this in, you plug it all in, like I said, plug in your HDMI, plug in your ethernet, turn it on, type in the code. At that moment, if you have selected public, because you know, you're know you gonna do a public show eventually, so you choose, you know, make my stuff public, you're live. <laughs> so last night I hooked this up and I'm messing around. And I'm like, hold on a second, go over to my Facebook page and there I am. So uh, be warned that when you first turn it on and punch in that code, you will be live. So you can, when you're setting it up, choose your permissions to be either public, um, friends only or private. If you choose private, then you will still be live, but you'll be the only one who can see it, but you are live out of the box. So it's not a bad thing. It's just, there could be better warning on the documentation. Okay, from there, I've run into a few things and this is why I'm not currently broadcasting with this unit, obviously, because it's in my hands and not hooked up to anything. The configuration of this thing requires a mouse, a wired mouse. I didn't have one of those here last night. I had to go get one. Fortunately, I have one at home, digging in a drawer somewhere. So I went home and I got that, brought it in this morning, tried to get it up and running. But unfortunately, I cannot control it. I don't know why. I've got an email out to Epifan, so we'll see what they say. But to date, I have not been able to control any of the UI. They do not have a web interface. It's something they're considering, future roadmap. But there is no web interface right now. So the only way to control this box is by hooking up an external monitor, fine, and plugging in a mouse. Not fine. Now, I'm sure that it works with other mice, but for some reason, my very simple Apple USB mice, mice mouse is not working on here. So that is clearly not good. So I have no control over it. The kind of control that I would have, have had I if I had it, would include the ability to not have it go auto live as soon as you turn it on. Kind of an important thing, I think. Oh good, now I've got the actual live feed up. Oh, and people are commenting, excellent. See, now it's loading. Uh, good morning, Brad. And apparently there's a second comment that I'm not seeing. Fabulous, thank you, Facebook. Um, so I, I have no control. I can, I should be able to turn off the auto broadcast, which would be very, very handy. You should be able to set whether you're streaming to your timeline or to a page or group or other things. Uh, but where I wanna go is to my page, facebook.com slash photo Joseph. Right now, when I plug it in, it directs to my timeline not where I want to be. And a really, really big thing that you cannot do right now, and I have confirmed this, and they are currently, good morning, Joseph Burns. Excellent, more comments coming in. They are actively investigating what it will take to add it, is the ability to connect to a scheduled 
stream. Now on Facebook Live, if you just go live, it just goes live. Boom, you're on the timeline, there you are. But if for those of you who've been watching the show for a while, you remember that I had no way to tell you I was gonna go live. I mean, I could do a post and say, hey, I'm gonna go live, but that post had nothing to do with the actual live broadcast. So what I would do is I would start the broadcast a few minutes early. I had a little timer countdown, counting down from five minutes to three minutes or something like that. That gave a chance for Facebook to build your audience, as they put it. Um, people can share it, people find it, they click through. If you just go live and you start the show, good morning, and you start your show, no one's there yet because no one will be there the moment you go live because no one's clicked on it yet. That takes at least a few seconds and more likely a couple of minutes. So the whole thing of Facebook Live scheduled events came. Thank God it was one of those, like, you have to have this. They came out with it. They rolled it out. Once I got mine, that's how I started doing all of these shows, including today's, which is fantastic. I can schedule it as little as, I think, 10 minutes in advance is the least and as much as seven days in advance. I believe that's right. Anyway, so that setup is a whole different live streaming connection. You can't schedule and go live from your phone from the Facebook app even, as far as I know you can't. Um, but more importantly, so far that I've seen none of the devices that are designed for streaming to Facebook allow you to do that through the Facebook interface. So my video pro, for example, using the Facebook presets, all I can do is click to go live and go live. Now I can't schedule it. But when you set up a live stream in advance, what you get is this R T M P R M T P R T R M four letters with the letters R T M P in them um, stream. And you get a code, a key. It's your private key. Don't share it. That key you punch into your streamer and that is that's how it knows where to go. So with Facebook Live, like as I just did this morning, I go in and I set up the event. I copy that key, that unique key, and I copy that over to my video and I hit go, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, before broadcast. I hit stream. It starts streaming to my scheduled event, but the public doesn't see it until the scheduled time which is why things will go live at exactly the right time, right? If I say 9.30, it goes live at exactly 9.30 and I've already been streaming for several minutes and it's all good to go. This does not allow you to do that yet because it doesn't have the RTMP or MTP, whatever, uh, scheduling thing. It's, you know, the manual configuration. So I'll, I'll just through a Facebook hook, if you will, a Facebook API, I guess, but only for the push button live, go live now. So that's huge for me, absolutely huge. I would imagine, and I could be wrong, but I would imagine that that's a really big deal to anybody who's taking Facebook Live seriously. And you're probably not going to spend $300 on a box unless you're taking Facebook Live seriously. So this is something that, in my opinion, FFN needs to update immediately. They are working on it. I will update you as soon as they respond to me. But as I promised, I am keeping you up to date and reporting on this as I discover it, the good and the bad. I still have very, very high hopes for this box. Uh, the the signal that I did see for the brief few moments that I was streaming live looked great. So that's all good. I haven't been able to experience the comment feedback part yet through the screen, which I'm really looking forward to. Ease of configuration for what I could do because I couldn't configure much, plug it in and it was live, awesome. But cannot configure it yet for some reason. Maybe it just doesn't like the Apple mouse. Got to figure that one out and cannot configure it to go to my streaming uh, scheduled events. So that's a deal breaker for me for now. So there's that. Um, I will update you as I learn more. All right, let's get rid of this thing. Next up, I had a viewer on the YouTubes ask about, who saw the video that I did, which I will link to here. Um, I did a video about this new Manfrotto video tripod, a little travel video tripod. It is called the Be Free Live Video Tripod Kit with Case. Anyway. Very, very cool, small video tripod with a video head. So I did a whole thing on this. When I, it was kind of an unboxing. I bought this, this was not given to me. This is one that I paid my my cash for. Um, and I love it, I really do. It's, it's a great lightweight tripod. It's great for my lightweight Lumix cameras. Obviously at, what is it, a uh, $240 price point, this is not the end all be all of video tripods and video heads. Video heads can get really expensive. You can spend a couple thousand dollars just on the head. So for what this is, for the price that it's at, I think it's great. So I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, when I did that video, I had done not a comparison, but I referenced the Mi Photo tripod and some chap had written into me and said, hey, I've been looking at all these videos on the Mi Photo and videos on the Manfrotto, but nothing comparing them. And he asked if I would do that. So that's what this is. Now, this is not a 
apples to apples comparison. These are, first of all, very different size models. So this, the one that I have here, the Mi Photo that I have is the Backpacker. Let me switch over, oops, lost this. Let me switch over to this screen for a moment and show you this on, come on you, there we go. Uh, there we go. So on the left here, you've got the Mi Photo Backpacker Travel Tripod. So that's what I am working with right now. That's what I've got in my hot little hands. $150 price point. There is a slightly larger one called the Road Trip, which is, let's see, zoom that out, which is just under $200, which is the same size as the Manfrotto that I've got. So this would be a more apt comparison if you were going to be comparing them side by side as far as comparing weight or you know, full like support of the camera, anything like that. So they aren't the same. So let's put that out there right now. Also, more importantly than that is that this has a video head. This has a ball head. So we are not comparing the heads. But the fellow who asked about it wanted to know about things like the legs, the stability, and that sort of thing overall. So, okay. So that's what I'm going to talk about. We're going to talk about the, the type of uh, uh, leg locks because they are different on the two. The overall folding and functionality of the tripod, but not stability because the bigger tripod, bigger Mifoto would be more stable than this one. That's just the way tripods are. Bigger equals more stable. And obviously not the head and things like the weight. Clearly, we're not going to compare either. Those, you can look those specs up online if you want to. So let's look at the biggest comparisons, um, how it folds up and how you open it up. Okay, so the Mi Photo, first of all, they both work very similarly in the sense that the they both fold with the, in the using position, oops, lock that up. Um, when you're when you're using it, you fold the legs down, and then when you're putting it away, they fold up. So you've got, instead of just going down like this and then this head dropping down, they actually invert on itself and it goes up like so. This one does the same thing. So it's using position is down like yay. And then when you're storing it, they fold up opposite. Okay, so there's, for that regard, they are the same. Okay, when you unfold them, how do they lock? The Mi Photo has a push button here. You just kind of push in and that locks and it has two stages. So you pull it down a little bit, pull out that lock, push it up just a touch, push it back in again and oops and it locks again. So you've got two positions. Let's do the first position here and we'll do it like so. So there's your first position, which also shows us that this is the lowest position for this tripod. Let me make sure that's right. Um, yeah, this is the lowest position for this tripod, which is quite high, quite high. This one, let's go ahead and open this guy up. You do fold the legs down the same way. Then there's a little spinning latch on here which oops gotta get that down farther spinning latch you put it in the middle position and that locks it into the lower leg position so there we go pop 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 out now you think oh that's got a higher point higher starting point but it doesn't because the center column goes down so right away this one even though it is a bigger tripod right physically larger tripod it has a lower lowest position than this one if you got the bigger me photo, which I don't have, but I'm assuming it is exactly the same construction, just bigger, then it's an even higher minimum position. So lower minimum position, which can definitely be a good thing um, at this height. Now let's go ahead and put the legs out a little bit farther and let's see what happens. So on this uh, Manfrotto, again, these little latches, you just got to kind of clutch the leg in a little bit, spin the latch out to the final position, the latch, the dial, whatever it is, and then move that out. And now it's center position. Well, you can kind of see here, it's, um, <laughs> you know, here, I'm going to get rid of this lower third to free up a little bit of space on the desktop here. Um, uh, sorry, hold on one second. Let me just turn this off. There we go. Um, the center post is hitting the ground before the legs do. So you would have to raise up the center post. So now if I raise up the center post and or raise up, yeah, raise up the center post. So that's its lowest position. There's that. This one, now let's see what happens. We bring it out, boom, boom, boom. So legs out, legs out, and legs out. Here we go. Clearly this is something that should be done on my desk, but hey, it works. Now we're at basically the same. So if you put the legs out, you essentially have the same lowest position, except that the Manfrotto, you can invert the head. Now this is something I showed in the previous video, so I'm not gonna go into the whole thing. Now, if you wanna see it, jump back to the older Manfrotto video and there went my whole Facebook page, um, but I am still streaming. That's good. Um, you can take this column out, invert it, put it in upside down, and then hang your camera upside down and mount it a millimeter off the floor. So that's 
there is that advantage to this one. So, so there's that. Okay, this one does not have the inverting column. All right, so there's how the legs open and close. There's how low they get. I'm not going to compare how high they get. Oh, and again, this one probably doesn't get as low with the bigger tripod, even spread out, right? Because they're longer base legs, so it would be a little bit higher. So yeah, you definitely, without question, can get lower th with the Manfrotto. All righty, um, inverting column on the Manfrotto, not on the Mi Photo. Good to know. Let's see, next, let's talk about, well, let's talk about this mechanism itself. So this mechanism that I was playing with here to open and close the legs, I gotta admit, I'm not a huge fan. It's, um, it's a little kind of wiggly to get in that middle position getting it to the all the way open position for it to go all the way out, that's an easy, quick flip. Close is an easy, quick flip. But that middle position, okay, now of course it's slopping in very nicely, but quite often I find that I kind of miss it and I'm going, oh, wait, that's not right. Put it back down, put it back into place and there you go. So if you're moving quickly, as you often are when setting up a tripod, um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. It's not like it's a deal breaker, but I would rather, it, see now it's like really not, into position. I would rather that be a little bit cleaner, a little bit better working. It's just a little bit odd. I'm seeing the way this actually physically works is there is a stopper here that hits the leg. So if you don't have this quite right, it'll push itself out of position. If you have it not quite right that way, it'll push it out of position. So yeah, I mean, you really got to get it right into the right spot. Once it's there, it's stable, but I just, I feel like it's a little bit clunky in how it gets there. So that's that's my thought on that. Um, so my this Facebook page is crashing over and over again. So let me try and reload this again because otherwise I can't see your comments. If there are in fact any comments coming in, come on, reload and behave yourself. Oh, excellent! Now we're on a completely different page. Yay, Facebook! Okay, one more try. We're reloaded and and there's my feed. Oh look, all those people watching live and more comments coming in. See, this is why I need this thing to actually work. This is why, see the comment feed coming up on the Facebook page while I'm watching it is really crappy for some reason. I am, this is one of the big things I'm excited about this because it has a dedicated comment interface, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. Okay, uh, Brad Edwards said, I got the Mi Photo road trip and love it for an easy travel tripod, folds up great, fits easily in a carry-on. Center column does drop on that one. Okay, good to know. Thank you very much, Brad. So the center column does drop on the larger one, so you may get lower. Does it invert though, Brad? Can you remove it and put it in an upside down for an inverted tripod head? Let me know that, please. And there's, this thing says there's one more comment, but um, I'm not seeing it, so. If someone else is commenting other than good morning and Brad's comment, let me know. Brad says it also inverts. Okay, great. So the road trip, which again is the bigger one of these. Let's go back to that webpage real quick like, uh, where was it? Here we go. This is this road trip on the left here. The 198 one at B&H does invert. So with that in mind, you should be able to get it as low. Well, you can get it as low as the... Uh, as the man photo because it goes upside down so you can mount it, mount it right off the floor. So thank you, Brad, that's awesome. Thank you for participating. Okay, so we were talking about these latches. Um, again, not a huge fan of that, but you know, it does work. And there goes the Facebook Safari thing crashing again. I'm going to, excuse me, I'm gonna load this up on a different computer because the comments are kind of important today as you are undoubtedly seeing. Um, go into my page and Let's just let me just give me a second here to load this up nice and big. Find the conversation. Here it is. And there's the comments. Okay, great. Hopefully that stays. Um, Vena is saying, I agree on the leg locks, but I can't stand the screw lock on the Mi Photo. Much prefer the locks on the Manfrotto. Okay, so now you're getting into the leg locks part. So let's talk about that because that is a huge, huge difference. Yeah, the feed is fine. It's my Facebook page that keeps crashing, Joseph, but thank you. Um, okay, so. What Vina's talking about are these latches here. So let's talk about that. So the two, the opening and closing latches, very, very different design. This one is, sorry, I should finish up on here on the Mi Photo. It works fine. I've never had it slip out of place. It seems a little simplistic in its design. Um, and I guess in this regard, for the higher one, it, it can kind of slip a little bit if you don't get it right in. But honestly, I've never had an issue with it. It is a very simple lever mechanism, nothing fancy. This this mechanism is seems a little bit over-designed, if you will. Okay, so now let's talk about the leg extensions. So very, very different approaches here. The Mi Photo has twisting, tightening column ones. So you unscrew it, and then you screw it back in to tighten it. Okay, so that's 
We'll, we'll reserve the better or worse for a moment, uh, for just a moment from now. So unlock, unscrew, 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 and you can collapse those up. That's how that works. Tighten it up. Now, if you don't tighten it enough, let's say that I, um, well, here, let's get, we'll get into that moment. Let me just compare. This one has a, I guess you'd say it's more traditional. I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but has a latch lock, right? So open, put it wherever you want and latch to close. Now that crunchy sound that you hear is sand. <laughs> I took this to the beach. Tripods and beach is not a good mix. Um, I will probably never get the sand out of this thing unless I completely disassemble it, which I really don't know if I want to do or not. Anyway, so two very different mechanisms, latch and twist. So advantages, disadvantages of each. I'll tell you one of the things that I like about this. Let's do that first. We'll, do, we'll go with what I like and then with what I don't like. One of the things I really like about this is you noticed when I first picked it up and I had the legs up and then I turned it down and all the legs fell out. I actually like that. Here's why. So I'm going to collapse this thing, put it in my bag. I unloosen all these, right? I, they're down. Now I collapse it and I put it in and let's, let's put this whole thing away as if I was actually putting this into my bag. Okay. Okay. This is in my bag. Take it out of my bag and I got to set this thing up. Nothing, nothing to unlock. I simply pull this down. All the legs fall out. Boom, 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 boom. Flip this, all the legs fall out. And if they don't fall out, it's a very, well, assuming they're loose, it's a very quick pull to loosen those down. Lock, 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 and repeat. I can set this tripod up very, very quickly because I do not have to lock the legs once I fold it up. I can loosen them, collapse the whole thing, loosen them, collapse the whole thing. <laughs> there we go. Close, fold it up and I'm done. Whereas on here, so I guess I'm kind of jumping around on what I like and don't like, but deal with it. Um, on here, obviously unlock to put it in. If I want to leave these unlocked, I kind of can't because they're going to get in the way of the whole closing up system. You could leave it unlocked, but not really collapse it all the way. So let's see here. I have to bring this back up. So that is now up. That's closed, that's closed, and <sighs> open these, open these, open these, there we go. And that's closed. So if I did that, oops, I didn't even leave these open. Let's leave these open. So all three of these are open. You'll see that I cannot really, I cannot actually collapse this completely. So now it's not gonna fit in the bag properly. So I have to latch these. Is that a big deal? I know it's up to you. Um, I like that I don't have to latch these, I don't have to tighten these. So that is one of the big advantages to me. Um, Florian, hey Florian, you're saying, are you streaming at 480p or higher? Cause I can just select 480 and lower. Uh, I'm streaming at 720p because that's what Facebook, that's the max Facebook allows. What's showing up on your end is probably up to your bandwidth. So sorry about that. You will be able to watch this later on YouTube at full 1080p. So, because um, that's what I capture locally. Okay, so that's, that's a big difference in there. I, I like that. Now that said, one of the problems with this type of a mechanism is that you may inadvertently not tighten it enough, right? So let's say I tighten this, but it's not really tight enough. It's sitting on my, my camera sitting on it. And suddenly the thing starts to fall down because I didn't tighten it all the way. Obviously that is a user issue, but you do have to really grab on that and tighten it and make sure that you are fully tight. Whereas this one, the latch, you have a visual, you know that it's locked. That said, over time, these can, can come loose, but it is a simple little tool to go in there and tighten that so that when you lock it down, it is in its fully tight position. So these can work loose over time. If they do, you need a tool to adjust it. I don't, did this come with one? Maybe it did. You know, I think it did. I think I taped it to the inside of its bag. I did, yeah. It came with one. I taped it in there. Oh, more sand in here. Um, so it does come with a little hex wrench so you can tighten those as needed. Whereas this, there's no tool because the tightening is all done by hand every single time. It's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Um, you know, both are obviously functional. Both work. Both get the job done advantages, disadvantages to each side of that. So that's that's just a matter of opinion. As far as the, let's see, is there anything else on the legs I want to talk about? Uh, neither one of these have spikes on the bottom. Um, uh, Brad, you were talking about this. If Let me know if yours, if the bigger one has the spikes on the bottom. I really like tripods that have spikes on the bottom, but neither one of these do. So there you go. Uh, this video one has a slightly more kind of traditional flat foot thing. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Neither one has spikes. They both have rubber feet on the bottom. 
All right, uh, let's see here. What else do I want to talk about on here? Uh, obviously, can't compare weight. Build quality, they both feel very, very good. I guess, if anything, I would actually... This is probably sacrilegious, but the Mi Photo maybe feels a little bit better build quality. Maybe just a little bit. I've had this Mi Photo for three years, I think. I don't use it all the time, obviously, but I've had it for a few years, at least two, maybe three. Um, feels great, right? Feels awesome. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's been abused or broken or anything, and I've carried this all over the place. It is made in China, if that sort of thing matters to you, whereas this one is made in Italy. Now, some of Manfrotto stuff is made in China, just so you know, but this particular one is made in Italy. At least that's what it says on here. So there's that. Uh, both have a a bag hanging hook on the bottom. I commented before that this one on the Manfrotto is plastic. Feels like it could break if you hung something too heavy on it, whereas the one on the Mi Photo is a metal hook. This does not appear that it would break at all. It just kind of springs down and you hang your bag on there. And that's to add weight to it, add stability to it. Someone commented when I made the comment on the original video about the plastic one, they commented that they liked the plastic so that it could break, I guess. And uh, you know what? There was something about they liked the plastic because it could break. I don't remember exactly why. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but I'd have to look back at the original comment. But it, it's something to note. That one's plastic. This one's metal. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Anything else I want to talk about on the legs? I get as far as cleaning, let's talk about that because this one is sandy and that's obviously my fault. I took it to the beach. Could I completely take this apart? I think so. If I took out, should I just do this? Sounds like a really bad idea. Oh, what the heck? Let's just do it. <laughs> let's see what happens. If I no longer have a tripod after this, um, know that it's because I'm an idiot. Rah, come here. Oh boy, that's taped in there. Come here. There we go. Okay. We're gonna find out, I'm gonna go with the bottom leg here, how easy it would be to take this apart to completely clean it. Because it's got sand in it and that is bugging the crap out of me and I think it needs a complete cleaning. So, lock it and undo this. Why do I think I'm gonna to totally regret this? Excellent. Let's see if this is a bad idea. Or I'm trying to position this so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing without breaking anything else that out of the way. All right. Oh, and by the way, if anybody's wondering, the reason that I'm still not running off of the um, the new Blackmagic micro cinema camera is because my SDI cables did not show up yesterday. Weather delay. They are at the local post office and should be delivered today. So hopefully by tomorrow, I will be up and running with the new camera. Okay. There's the latch out. Well, now what? <laughs> well... Oh, there's a little, what is this? Can that come off? Huh. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that comes out. Oh yeah, okay, good. Oh yeah, I can full on clean this thing. Okay, so that's good. Obviously be a bit of effort, but clearly this isn't something you should have to do unless you're an idiot like me and take your tripod to the beach. Don't take your tripod to the beach. Um, this, uh, taking it apart to clean it is good. This one, how could I take this apart? Now I'm really going to regret this. If I just undo this all the way. Oh yeah, okay. Well, there you go. Even uh, even easier to take apart. And probably even harder to put back together. Um, yeah, so this can come apart completely as well. Okay, well that's good. All right, so both of these, reasonably easy to completely take apart for cleaning if you do something brain dead like take it to the beach. Perfect. All right. Um, Do I have a preference over the two of them? I mean, given that they are different uses, right? Video, not video head. Um, I don't think I really have a preference. They both work. They're both lightweight. They're both very portable. Again, smaller, but that's because it's a smaller model. Uh, if I was going to buy one tripod, it would have to be the ball head one because with this one, you can't go vertical unless you never want to take a vertical picture. This is definitely a video tripod. So there's that. Um, but Manfrotto obviously makes tripods this size that aren't video tripods. So you can get whatever head you want. I, I'm torn. The price point is very similar. 240 versus 200. Um, I mean, obviously, it's not an insignificant difference, uh, but it's it's not enough of a difference to make it an obvious, right? If this was that much better, the 40 bucks is, a no, you know, that'd be fine. That's not an issue. But um, that said, if I, was to, if I was to compare an identical video type or ball head type tripod, I would have a hard time. 
They both have advantages and disadvantages. Like I said, I do feel like the build quality on this might actually be better, which is really kind of almost sacrilegious given that this is Manfrotto. Manfrotto stuff is very, very good, but this is their cheaper line, right? You can spend thousands of dollars on Manfrotto tripods and then those things are built like tanks. I have one that I use in the studio that is, I, it's, like, it's not carbon fiber, but it's one of these, I don't know, hybrid things. It's an amazing tripod, uh, solid as a rock and definitely has a better build quality than this. So, all right, that's that. Let me see, uh, any more comments coming in since there are, oh, there are comments all over the place. Awesome. Uh, oh, no new ones though. Okay, so at least as far as I can tell, let me see, I'm gonna try and see this whole thing. Let me make sure this is muted. Take off the audio here, sorry. Uh, take off the audio here just to make sure I don't feedback if it starts to play audio and try and see the full thing. Okay, no, that looks like all the comments. So thanks again, everybody, for watching who's watching live. Hey, exciting, cool news. Guess what? I'm on iTunes now. This show, which, as you know, probably, obviously, it's here on Facebook Live, and then it goes to YouTube afterwards. It also now goes to iTunes as a podcast. So you can search in the iTunes, uh, in the podcast store or any podcast app, whatever, that uh, and search in iTunes for this podcast. Just search for Photo Joseph or Photo Moments or both of them, and you'll find it. And uh, we'll be getting up on the Google Play Store next. That is the next step. Um, had to make a tweak to the RSS feed to get it to be accepted there. But as far as I know, that's done. So I will be submitting that today. So if you're on the Google platform, you'll have that. And yeah, cool. I'm stoked. It's kind of fun. So you get a daily little video downloaded to your, uh, to your uh, phone thing. <laughs> All right. I think that's everything. Any other follow-up questions, you know what to do. Stick them in the comments, either in Facebook or on YouTube. Um, can't comment on the iTunes thing, but you can come back to one of these other platforms to do it. And I guess that is everything. Right on. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I have no idea what we're going to do tomorrow yet. It kind of depends on what I managed to get configured and hooked up. Um, yeah. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>